Now, the truth is, in the black community, a lot of people believe that you can actually grow your hair past a certain length, and that is just not true. <laughs> your basic health, skincare, and hair care concerns. Make sure to follow me on my Instagram page at Omotinu. And also hit the subscribe button so that you can get more videos like this coming your way. So obviously right now I'm on braids so you can't really see my hair but hopefully you cut it in the intro and in the thumbnail and you get an idea of why I think I know what I'm saying in just, just a little bit when it comes to hair care. Now the truth is in the black community a lot of people believe that you can actually grow your hair past a certain length and that is just not true. We've seen a lot of people that have been able to grow their hair past shoulder length even here in this Nigeria. Exhibit A, Exhibit B and many many Although genetics also has a role to play in how your hair looks, the truth is we have a lot of bad hair practices especially here in Nigeria stop your hair, stunt your hair growth, practices that stop your hair from growing totally, practices that kill your edges, practices that damages, damage your hair totally and that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video and trust me we are all guilty of at least one of these mistakes I'm sure that if you make these changes you actually notice a very significant difference in your hair game, trust me, so make sure you listen attentively mistake which is actually common and which a lot of people actually know already but still choose to make this mistake because they probably feel like it's not making a significant difference is wearing tight hairstyles especially when it comes to braids when it comes to hairstyles like ghana weaving when it comes to like ponytail when they pack your hair and pack your edges it's not a good idea at all because making hairstyles like this actually tend to talk on the root of your hair and as you're talking in the root of your hair, you are losing hair, especially when it comes to your edges. Anytime you want to do tight, um, your hairstyles like braids or kind of weaving, just try to tell the stylist, the address or whatever to leave your edges out. Just leave at least this front part out so that no matter the tugging, the pulling that the hairstyle is doing, at least your edges are not affected. And just try. There's no harm in telling your stylist to just loosen up her or his hand or her hand a little bit when you're making hairstyles like this. Because trust me, that's like the number one thing that is actually damaging your hair. Another mistake that people make that they don't realize is actually a lot of us tend to comb and brush our hair the wrong way. And this affects our hair growth massively. This is the thing, especially when you're losing your braids or you're losing your hair, you want to make a new hairstyle. Just ensure that when you want to comb, when you start combing your hair, when it's still in that tangled state, use a big comb and start at the root. Start gently. Don't just take, don't take a small comb and start combing because at the end of the day, you'll be using a lot of force and then, you know, the tangled hair is just going to be getting in between the comb and pulling on your hair. And it's not a good idea. Start with a wide suited comb like this. And then just start from the root also. When you're combing your hair, especially when you're just losing your braid or losing your weaving or whatever, you need to be very, very patient. Like if you actually want your hair to grow, I think patience is key. Because a lot of people, when you're losing your hair and you want to comb, it's really them just losing. You know, your hair might actually not be the soft type, it might be the hard type, but try not to lose you know, all your force, all your energy. Save your energy. Don't be using all your energy to comb your hair and brush your hair. Just try and be patient with it. You're detangling it. You know? Say it with me, you're detangling it. Just a little bit, be patient. And then, you know, gradually the knots are loosening up. And then comb from the roots upwards. And it will make a massive difference because you're not pulling most of your hair. If you notice when you finish combing most of the time, you just see a lot of your hair on the comb. Most of the time, it shouldn't be that way. It's just because you're trying to hurry or you're you know, just combing it anyhow. Number three mistake you're making, and this is for my relaxed hair ladies, is you're actually, you're probably um, relaxing your hair way too much, way too often, way too frequently. If you're doing relaxing your hair every two months, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're wrong. If you're relaxing every month, every week, you're wrong is just to choose a regular pattern it can be maybe every three months every four months and just space it out as much as possible this is because relaxers actually tend to weaken the hair especially the roots of the hair 
And so if you're doing it too much, obviously your hair is going to be too weak. You're not giving it enough time to actually recuperate and get, you know, strong and, you know, grow more. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, but yeah, just stop relaxing way too often. It's not helping your hair. It's making your hair weak and it's not going to make your hair healthy at all. If you want healthy, thick, strong hair, space out your relaxing if at all you want to relax your hair. So I think this is the first mistake I'll be mentioning now is that you're probably using too many products on your hair Especially my natural hair ladies, no shade, but actually it's the fact Because a lot of you want to see what works for you and you tend to just use this, use this When this Instagram vendor recommends this hair product, you use it When you see one celebrity that actually her hair, her natural hair is popping and then she mentions the product she uses, you buy it it's actually not helping your hair grow. The best thing you can do for yourself is actually just try and okay, you can at the beginning you can experiment, but once you find what works for you, just stick to it. Don't say because this person is using this and it's working for the person. If this one is already this product is already working for you, use it and just keep using it and stick to it. Another big mistake that is actually very common in Nigeria is that we use too much heat on our hair. We are constantly using it. We want to dry, we use it. We want to detangle, we use it. We want to comb, we use it. We want to straighten, you use it. You want to curl, you use it. And using it on your hair, obviously, I think most people know this is that it damages your hair. It's not good for your hair. If at all you want to use it, try and limit it. Don't make it so frequent that you use it. Anytime you go to the salon, if at all you really need to use it, make sure it is at least re reduced, like the temperature is reduced to at least the barest minimum. Because I was in the salon recently, I washed my hair and I was in a hurry. Normally, I might air dry or just use like a blow dryer, like a hand dryer. But this time around, I was in a hurry and so I had to use their blow dryer. So I sat under the blow dryer and then this hair stylist just increased the temperature to what I feel like must have been the highest. Because it was basically frying my brain and I knew in my heart of hearts that this thing was going to spoil my hair. So at the point I couldn't take it anymore, I just you know opened it, I stood up from under the air dryer and I just took my hand and I reduced it myself and I went back to sit down no amount of rushing <laughs> is worth it because at the end of the day to just fry your hair and then your hair is just weak so try and limit the amount of it you use if at all you want to use it but i feel like most of the people that i've seen that actually have long hair hardly like they rarely use it on their hair whether it is to straighten whether it is to blow dry they rarely use it on their hair so your best best would be to just avoid it totally and i'm sure you will see the difference in your hair game big mistake that we make a lot in this country because we have so many bad practices in this country that is not helping us at all is that what we relax our hair the wrong way the totally wrong way this is omg this is like the biggest on this list because it's like the major thing that actually kills our hair just makes it not to pass the shoulder length if you know what i mean is that on the boxes of this relaxer i think especially for people that use all those kits you actually see the instructions there but a lot of this stylist a lot of these addresses tend to just ignore the instruction totally and just do what they feel is right because that's what everybody's doing and trust me the way everybody relaxes their hair is wrong now let me tell you the right way to relax your hair there was a period where I actually had to do a lot of research concerning relaxing hair and I researched and I, the, the things I found in my relaxing hair were actually dumbfounded because I realized that most hairdressers actually relax hair the same way and that way is actually wrong. What we're supposed to do basically is that when you relax your hair, what you're relaxing is actually the undergoats. That is the hair that has, well, let's say the hair that has come up since your last touching. Or whatever they call it, it's that undergrowth that we're relaxing. But we actually tend to relax the old hair, and this does not work. See, uh, this life is very easy. Just tell your hairdresser what you want. Just tell because some of them can actually be very stubborn. They feel like, okay, I'm this professional here, so you can't tell me that this is how to do it. Meanwhile, they are doing it wrong. Just tell them what you want. Tell your hairdresser when you want to relax your hair, you're just relaxing the undergrowth. Make sure you're just doing it from the roots to a certain point, not the old hair. If you're relaxing your old hair, you trust me, you're just making it weak and weak because that part of the hair is already relaxed. It's the undergrowth that actually needs relaxing because that part is new and it is not relaxed. Don't, don't relax the tip of your hair. The tip of your hair is already 
it's already let's say fragile enough you don't need to relax it just relax it from your roots to a certain point and that is it and another thing is we keep relaxer on for too long it's not supposed to be like that if you check your relaxer boxes you will notice that on the relaxer boxes they put 10 minutes to 15 minutes do you think they don't know what they're saying they made the relaxer so they know why they said that but then you have people that actually because when the last time i was at the salon i actually saw a woman that no jokes for like one hour the relaxer was on her head and they're like okay until it starts to pay you until it starts to pepe you before they actually wash it thing, which is actually like the <laughs> that's actually so so wrong and that's what is killing a lot of people say do not leave your relaxer off for too long read the box the box is key they know what is in that relaxer they know the chemicals they put there they know that if it's on your hair for too long it can damage your hair the damage might not even be visible but over time you just like your hair is getting weak by the time you are 40 your hair is already like an 80 year old's hair and then you give up on the hair and then you cut it and then you dye it okay i'm already dying party so yeah 10 15 minutes max relax except probably except if you are just relaxing for the first time and your hair is still very coarse but if you are the type that you're like relaxed hair gang like me and you relax regularly you don't really need to leave it on too long why trust me you don't need it. it's not until your hair is silky smooth and you are seeing your scalp until you know that it is relaxed that's not relaxed hair that's weak hair i sound so judgmental right now but you know we have to help each other you know? we have to help each other in this hair game me say i still want my hair to be rough. yeah another minor mistake a lot of people make is that actually goes a long way in destroying the hair or destroying the edges or making the hair weak is really making your hair immediately after you relax that's actually a very bad idea and i used to be guilty but i noticed that once i stopped that habit i think it was my sister that pointed my attention to that mistake once i stopped that habit i actually noticed significant growth and significant change in my hair when you relax your hair and you have done your hair and you know at that point in time it's still quite delicate it's still quite fragile i think the best thing you can do is okay wait at least five days just you know dry it pack it or something and then wait at least five days before you make your hair before you make braids before you make um ghana weaving or whatever it is it's a bad idea because you're making this thing and your hair is still fragile so any small movement any small plating any small uh, friction and your hair is is, is going <laughs> it's going and you just get too weak and weak the another thing we don't do enough in this part of the world is trimming the ends of your hair frequently I actually noticed there was a period I was actually doing this steady and I noticed significant growth in my hair. Well, I don't even know why I stopped, but recently I started it back. I'm going to set a picture on the screen of the last time I actually had a trim because I noticed that my hair, in fact, <laughs> I did some very most of these mistakes that I've been talking about recently. I did almost all of them and I noticed the impact on my hair crazily. Like my hair became weak, my hair wasn't growing. So recently I just gave myself brain and I was like, okay, let me let me just do the right thing. The last mistake I'm going to mention is actually a funny one and one that you might not actually really consider important, but I actually see it as important. Let me say if you stop being a chair jumper, just stick try and stick to one hairstyle. Stick to one that if she, he or she knows what he or she's doing. Instead of jumping from one chair to the other, before you know it, they understand your hair. Before you know it, there's a bit of familiarity and anything you want to do. If you don't want this, if you want this, you can communicate with them and there won't be any issues. Also, as time goes on, they tend to understand your hair, they tend to understand the type of hair you have, and they are able to treat it better. So I've been using the same stylist for like two years now, and it has helped my hair tremendously because she understands my hair, so she knows how to take care of it, she knows what to do and how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to stop here today because I feel like this video is already getting too long and I have said too much. So guys, if you want a part 2 of this video, be sure to let me know in the comment section below or if you want me to tell you in another video the products I use that have actually helped my hair, just the few products that I use, if you want me to let you know in another video, also comment down below. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!